Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at Kubernetes namespaces. So a namespace is a way to logically isolate resources within a Kubernetes cluster. And so namespaces can be organized based on project, department, or any user defining group. And so if we're using kubectl, it's kubectl get namespace or ns uh, for short, but you generally get the idea with these get commands. It's always get whatever you want. Uh, Kubernetes starts with four initial namespaces. There's the default one. So this is just where your stuff is gonna end up. Uh, if you create anything without specifying a namespace, you have kube public. These are for resources that are publicly visible and readable. Uh, you have kube system. This is a namespace that stores objects, uh, uh, stores objects created by the Kubernetes systems, or we say objects, it's pretty much pods, okay? And so engineers deploying applications are not supposed to touch this namespace. We say not supposed to, um, let's say we're using uh, AWS EKS to deploy our managed Kubernetes cluster over there. Uh, they might uh, tell you to, um, if you want to have uh, an ingress controller and use uh, uh, the load balancer with AWS, you would then uh, for that one case, uh, create a controller ingress or uh, ingress controller for uh, AWS in that namespace. So it's not that it's, it never happens, but it rarely should it be done. And the cube system namespace is one we'll see throughout this course because every opportunity when we uh, use a new managed uh, a Kubernetes provider or a different um, lightweight distribution, I will always look at all the stuff and show you what's in cube system so you have an idea what's running on the cluster. Then you have cube node lease. So this holds lease objects associated with each node. It's used to detect node failures by sending heartbeats. And so you can create your own namespaces by doing kubectl, create namespace, and the namespace here would be, we're calling it production. Uh, so in clusters with a small amount of resources, namespaces aren't necessary, but it's up to you. If you wanna use them, you can use them. Um, but the great thing about namespaces is that you can apply um, like network policies and other kind of uh, permissions. So if you have role-based access controls, you can say, only give access to stuff in this namespace. So um, for me, I would probably always just create a namespace, but they say you don't have to, it might complicate things. So names of resources need to be unique with a uh, namespace, but not across namespaces. Um, they're talking about objects themselves. So like if you have a pod it, um, and you call it my app, it can be my app in a bunch of them, right? Namespace uh, based scoping is applicable only for namespace objects. So deployment services, things like that, uh, but not for cluster wide objects, storage class nodes, persistent volumes. So what we're talking about is there's um, certain objects and we're saying objects, we're talking about components. I don't know, sometimes the docs say components, sometimes the docs say objects, but the idea is that certain uh, Kubernetes components uh, can be namespace and some of them can't be. So that's something that we need to know. So. There are um, objects or components, Kubernetes components, that can only reside in a single namespace. There's ones that are um, multi-namespace, then there's ones that are clustered wide, so they can never live in a namespace. So example of single namespace objects are config maps and secrets. They cannot be shared across namespaces. They exist in one, okay? So uh, config maps and secrets. Then you have uh, services and pods, which can belong to multiple namespaces. Um, and then for cluster-wide, we have volumes and nodes. They do not exist in namespaces. They are just in the cluster. Now, I don't know what the exhaustive list of all the objects are. There's probably some way to look it up. I never did, but these are the ones that uh, you need to remember and just realize that there are three different kinds of buckets, okay? So you can uh, apply a system quota restrictions on namespaces to avoid overusage, like memory and compute. So that's an example of uh, leveraging namespaces to put limitations, uh, like security restrictions, things like that. If you don't provide a namespace for a component, it will end up in the default namespace as we already said, but there you go.